<laughs> okay, okay, all yours. We call this uh, little segment Questions Answered, so now is your chance to ask questions. Um, I'm going to start off, yeah, well we have a question already and then I'll go into something I want to talk about. Go ahead. Hardening of the ice cream, we're, that, the question that uh, we're going to get to, once we make the ice cream here, where should it go? Um, directly, how should it be hardened, what's the process, at what temperature, and how long is it going to last? Um, trying to ideally get ice cream to last for even up to a month, what temperature should it be stored at? Okay, what I'm going to do first is uh, have Christy, and I'll chime in too, and, and Jeff, talk about the size of the machine that you're going to buy for your business, because that is what the answer to your hardening questions is. Uh, Christy, you want to start out about you know, what size, depending on economy, you know, their back, their money, and their need? Well, the CB350 is always the best start. You know, if you're just getting into the business, you know, Steve can chime in any time. But it's a countertop, and just one of those chest freezers that size is just fine. Uh, Steve has always said before, if you're storing something for a month, obviously it's not doing well. Don't sell it or don't make it. It's not worth to keep it for a month. And if you're making ice cream that is a big popular seller to keep in the freezer for a month, not a good idea either. It, it, go ahead. Well, let me comment. Uh, his, his situation is a little different. He's not buying it, putting it in, and waiting for customers to buy it for a month. What he's doing is he's distributing to his other locations. So he has to pretty much stockpile each okay. of the flavors. Okay, so uh, now, I would say different. that uh, a CB350 is, is a great machine. But eventually, understand this, as sure as the sun comes up, eventually you're all going to have a 24-quart machine. There's no question. If you can afford it from the get-go, just get it. But don't go into debt to get it. If, you, uh, if it's a choice between going into debt for a 24 and starting your business on a 6, then get the 6. You know, I'm not a debt kind of guy. And you no. shouldn't be either. Uh, getting the smaller machine will help in two ways. It'll keep your initial out-of-pocket costs down, but more importantly... It'll give you, you're going to work twice as hard, three times as hard, or as many hours, not hard. And that will give you great experience so that by the time you're ready, it took me nine months to get uh, to go to the 24. Uh, but I had nine months of, of many hours a day working that, C, that CB350 to get good at my craft. And I did. So that when I transitioned to a 24, See, he agrees. When I transitioned to the 24, it was easy. And it, it was like a, a gift because now I'm working three quarters less time. But your, your situation uh, is a little different because you're going to buy them to store them, specifically to store them. Uh, I'm still not a believer in batch freezers, but Steve is, and he'll tell you you uh, mean flash bla hardening bla cabinet, yeah, not, hardening, right. not batch I'm freezers, sorry. that's what I do. Hardening build. cabinets. <laughs> so tell him if he's going to be making production to last a month while he distributes and has uh, inventory on hand, what should he do? The underlying answer uh, to your question starts off with what size machine you're going to get. Um, before Jeff and I started doing this back in about 2008, 2007, somewhere around there. Long time, it moves wow. fast. And uh, 429 uh, videos ago, uh, plus we did live TV. Live, it we was always live. live. It was live for a long this time. This show, this here was live. No editing, went right On out. On the World Wide Web. Yeah, yeah, right out. Before Jeff came along, the average store I was putting up was $150,000. Sometimes we would scrimp and do $100,000. That has changed completely uh, nowadays. I mean, I, I can't imagine spending $100,000, um, even if you had it. What changed? Banks stopped loaning money. Banks, if you've noticed, only give money to, money to people who don't really need it. Sure things. Uh, you cannot, yeah, absolutely sure things. And so the average one of us, uh, any one of us in this room, would have a hard time getting a loan. 
even even me running a corporation they would give us a hard time uh, getting a loan for a hundred thousand dollars you know they, they want just your soul in order to get that so that's out of the question uh, putting it on credit cards is the, the worst thing you can possibly do because you'll never get out of debt uh, the interest rates are 22 percent and it's geared for you oh sure just put it on uh, my, your card and pay a hundred and fourteen dollars uh, a month for the next 30 years uh, so that's not a viable uh, way to do it so here comes Jeff along with his something like 78 square foot store about that right 80 square feet. 80 square feet you know what 80 square feet is I think it's from here to the door uh, if that much no, not that big. it's Two, not that four, big six, eight, and um, he ended up with around 3,500 square right. feet when he left uh, but it took time to get there um, with the CB 350 we are putting uh, additional thousands of people into business that weren't there before because they had to buy a 24 mm -hmm. or a 44 it was the only thing available to them so right there you're talking uh, almost thirty thousand uh, dollars as opposed to uh, about uh, twelve and a half or a little less um, so it's it's all about the cost of the store and getting into business Jeff and I believe and Christy is also uh, has been finding this out too talking to our customers the best thing you do is just to say like Nike just do it just get into business uh, that is so critical because if you just get into business instead of saying well I'm gonna experiment for the next year on my flavors yeah. that's a whole year that you didn't make three hundred thousand dollars because you are going to make that much money. The ice cream business has never been as bold and big as it is right now. We normally are building about 38 machines a month. We have 129 orders uh, as of this morning. And by the time Christy and I get back to the phones, it'll be at about 136 of machines to build. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, and a, a huge amount of them are the CB350s. So what does the CB350 make? It makes one-fourth as much as the 24 quart. So like Jeff said, you can bang out a lot more ice cream uh, if you have a 24, but it's a non-starter if you can't afford $30,000. If you can afford, it's currently 12.3, yeah. by the time people see this video, you know, two years from now it'll be a little higher. It, it, it's a non-starter to buy that. You get into business, and I have converted over temporarily to Jeff's way of hardening the ice cream in a couple of chest freezers, which are fatally flawed, uh, because they're $700 each as opposed to $7,000 for a hardening cabinet. So again, and instead of 36 flavors and Italian dipping cabinets that are $20,000, $25,000, and they're absolutely gorgeous, I got these little things in the back, uh, I don't think the camera can see it, but it's the old floppy door cabinet where you don't see the ice cream, it just flops over on itself. And when you serve a scoop of ice cream, you turn your back on the customer and you scoop the ice cream. Um, that's, that's the way we do it. And now, what has happened, the um, CB350 came out in 2008, I believe, September of 2008. And all those people have had those machines for 10, uh, 12, 13 years. And over that 13 years, their businesses, some of them, you know, wait two months to order a machine. Some go five years before they go to a bigger one. But they, like Jeff said, they do go to a bigger machine. But it took time and it took money to get there. And you wake up one day and you say, huh, I'm running the CB350 18 hours a day. I don't even see my family. I haven't, there's no such thing as a vacation. If I get a 24, I cut it by four. Now uh, <coughs> um, I'm down to a very small number of hours. So when that time comes, you'll have the money to do it and your business will expand. So how are we going to harden the ice cream? You want to put it into... Uh, multiple stores and ship it. The hardening, the, the chest freezers are designed for you to buy DiGiorno pizzas, uh, frozen green beans, bring them home from the supermarket and throw them into the freezer already frozen. The thing doesn't have to do any work. It has worked successfully for Jeff because he has 3,500 square feet and 11 chest freezers. 11 of them. Uh, the average store is going to now be under 1,000 square feet, maybe 700, 800, 900. 
They're not going to have the room for that. And a chest freezer is five and a half, almost six feet long, horizontal. You're never going to get more than one or two of those in your freezer. And the best you can do to harden the ice cream to the point where you can even think about shipping it is to make one third of the capacity of the box. If this is the box, I can fill up this side today and then I have to stop. Otherwise, the temperature, if I try to fill up this side at the same time with more ice cream, the whole temperature is going up to 40 and everything melts because it was designed to hold ice cream, not freeze it. We're going to force it to freeze the ice cream to 10 below because we're only filling a third way. And then you go to your second freezer and you fill it up a third way. Tomorrow you come back and you fill another. When you have no money and you have the drive to get into business, it's going to work beautifully. You're going to be a huge success. But in a very short order, and I must have five or uh, 10,000 CB350s out there who have hit the point where they don't have the space, two cabinets isn't cutting it, they are opening a second store, and they're saying, where am I going to go to get a bona fide hardening cabinet? A bona fide true hardening cabinet, sometimes called a flash freezer, uh, it's got a couple of names, isn't just something that goes to 30 below zero. It's something that, instead of talking about ice cream, let's say Christy makes uh, 10 gallons of, of beef barley soup, and it's 70 degrees now that it's all cooked. And she wants to freeze it down, and she puts it in that freezer. That freezer, because of that, seven, that huge number of gallons, is going to skyrocket. 40 degrees up, it isn't going to freeze for days on end. I got a call, what started all this uh, part of the conversation was a lady said, I've had your machine now for five years, I've got four chest freezers and my ice cream, there must be something wrong with my Emery Thompson, the ice cream is very grainy, uh, it's very icy, uh, what's gone wrong? So we, uh, we, Christy looked up her records, found out that she had bought new blades after six years. She bought new springs. The machine's in perfect working order. It's her volume went up so high that now she's filling each box completely full and then going to the another one. And it goes up to 40. It all melts. And then it goes down to 10 below in about 15 hours. And it's all just icy junk. So to do multiple stores like you want to do and to hold the ice cream, you need... Uh, a hardening cabinet, uh, not just something made by True that says, oh, we go to 30 below. They go to 30 below until you put that soup in there, and then it goes back up to 40. You need something that pulls the heat out of the ice cream. And right now, there is only one on the market, and that is Kelvinator. Um, I am looking into, with another company, changing that uh, and coming out with a reasonably priced hardening cabinet. Uh, sometime, uh, hopefully, by the National Ice Cream Retailers Association show in November. Uh, hope to show it there. And uh, it'll be affordable. And it's going to allow these people who I'm still going to say to you here in the audience, uh, I've got $30,000 and I want to get into the ice cream business, fine. CB350 or CB200 and two, hardening uh, two chest freezers. That's the way we're going to get you into business. But then when you open that second store, when restaurants start asking for your product um, and the corner store that sells cheeses and, cheese and wine wants your pints of ice cream, you're going to have to go to a hardening cabinet. But just like you don't have the money for the hardening cabinet now, in a couple of years of running one of these machines, you're going to have plenty of money. It'll be a no-brainer to say, Steve, send me a hardening cabinet. So that's, that's where we're going. It's, in, it's unavoidable unless you have 3,500 square feet and 11 chest freezers. Now, Jeff's new business has 3,800 square feet. And he can buy all the uh, uh, chest freezers he wants and continue doing it his way. But most of us will never be able to afford the, uh, the rent on 3,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet. Uh, 1,500 is going to be difficult. Um, and yes, sir. What about the difference between a walk-in and a blast freezer? Uh, good question. The difference between a walk-in and a blast freezer. The blast, the chest freezer was Excuse so me, nice. I'm going to go hang myself in the bathroom for a minute. <laughs> the the chest freezer, you open the door, and and cold air is heavier than warm air. It all falls. It all stays there. That's really nice. You can practically leave that door open all day long uh, on your chest freezer, and you're not going to lose a lot of cold. Uh, because cold air falls. I wouldn't do it, but you can. 
uh, when you buy a vertical hardening cabinet with powerful blowers, very powerful compressors, goes down to 30 below and stays there, every time you open the doors, you're losing all the cold. And you close and you're sitting there staring and you're going, uh, where, did I, where did I put the mint chip? I'm going to try to solve that on the hardening cabinet I'm coming up with is we're going to have an ability for you to know where everything is. It's going to be very simple too. Um, so you're losing all the cold and it's got to recover fast. So it's got to have bigger compressors. I can do the same job of 30 below. I can do it in a walk-in. If, if, if uh, the control room back there is a walk-in, that can be 15 below because I'm walking in carrying two tubs of ice cream and I'm closing the door behind me. My tubs of ice cream in the hardening cabinet and in the upright are packed, one here, one here, one here, very tight together. In the walk-in, I've got lots of room. I've got rack storage like you've seen in, the, uh, in our video, and I've got a tub here and one here. I've got air circulation. It's not all going out the door. I'm walking around in there looking for my mint chip. So minus 15 will do just great, even maybe minus 10. And sometimes you can find a restaurant that's gone out of business. These uh, walk-in freezers are prefab. They're four by eight panels. You buy it, you snap it together, and you take the existing condensing unit and add a second one just to get down to that temperature. Yes? So we make the ice cream here, stick it in a walk-in freezer, because that's what I'm planning to do. At negative 15 degrees, how, how long is the ice cream good for? You could keep it for probably five months. Wow, okay. Yeah, but, it's gonna Christy, tell them why you don't want to keep it for five months. <laughs> it's the wrong because flavor. Yeah, the wrong yeah. Flavor. If, right. if you're keeping it for that long, it's not worth even making anymore. Right. So yeah. I, And I wouldn't I see, make that far ahead either. When I see, like, big chains, like, for example, Afters Ice Cream in California. I don't That's know, one of mine. I know. I know. <laughs> so they have 30 locations, and they have one manufacturing facility. Yeah. That's a whole lot of trucking, but they only their production center only works two days out of the week. So they have, I don't know how, how many weeks of stock that they're, you know, inventory that they're transporting to all these stores. But when I went and tasted that ice cream, it tasted like it was just made. It did not taste like it was, you know, stored for two months. Well, if they have 30 locations and if they're only pumping two days a week and then they're running for those two straight days, then depending on how many machines they have in there, then that's feasible. They're probably not stockpiling it for five months at a time. Yeah, I doubt that they are very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll bet you they're running out. Uh, what they made on Monday is gone on Friday. Yeah. yeah. It has to be. Um, Some people have 15 of those 40 quarts. It's not in here. The, the Beast, the 11 gallon one, they'll have 15 of them lined up on a wall. If they have that much, then yeah, I guess mm -hmm. you know. It doesn't yeah. matter what food you're dealing with. The fresher it is, the better it is. Right. Yeah. So you just have to keep that in mind. You know, can you eat a, a three-month-old ice cream? Sure you can, but would I want to? Not really. Right. Now, for you understand that this is a unique situation. Most of the people that take my class and that come to this class, they're looking to get into a, uh, uh, let's call it a mom-and-pop operation. They're not looking to open six stores right away. So my philosophy has always been keep it simple, do it cheap. And, and that's, I still subscribe to that. I would rather see, well, you took the class and you opened up, right? Yep. And it didn't cost you a zillion dollars because uh, it, there's no need to spend that kind of money. And to, to open up with a CB350 and some chest freezers and then grow from there, that's the way to do it. And it's cheap. Uh, there's not a person in the, in the United States, in the world that I can't put into business for twenty thousand dollars, and I agree. Except I, my number is a little higher. Um, well, it Twelve just, thousand is the machine. It just drives me nutty when I hear people say that they've hired an architect or a food consultant. Right. Food well, they want quote unquote, right. and, and they want granite countertops, and they want fancy lighting, and they want a checkerboard tile floor. It's you. oh, and they've got their T-shirts and their hats, and then they call and go, "I want a machine." Yeah. The, the key Nobody is, next week. it's very simple. You want to make the best product you can, which we can do, which you've seen being done already. And certainly the people in my class, they now can make the best ice cream in the world. That's something, to open a store knowing in your heart that you make the best ice cream in the world. 
And if there's seven and a half billion people on the earth, how many people like ice cream? Hello? Seven and a half billion. Every one of them. <laughs> Every one of them. So you're, offer, you're opening a store. Don't worry about granite and, and fancy signage and all that. You're opening a store that has a product that every single person who drives by or walks by or calls you up wants. They all want it. They all want great ice cream. And even if there's a place next door or down the street that has ice cream, it's not what you make. You make the world's best ice cream. I'll tell you what people want in a store because I've thought about it. What if I had, you know, like you see on TV, what if I had prep tables with cameras looking down and TVs behind me? Would it really make my presentation better? I don't think so. I don't think it would improve on it. If I was doing a store, um, I'm going to do it exactly like Jeff. I agree with him 100%. Get in for as little money as possible. Uh, but I also want to look at one other thing, and that is get them in and get them out fast. Because Americans don't like to sit and wait for anything. And if, if I see a long line and I have to wait an hour and a half, I may do it once. That's, that's was, that was the demise right from day one of Thai pan ice cream, where you had a refrigerated plate and you're moving it around like this and serving. Six minutes to make one serving. Ten people. Ten people is no line at all. That's an hour wait. Uh, the uh, nitrogen, that's six and a half minutes. 20 people, 20 people times six and a half minutes, you'll do it once as a novelty and never come back. You want a store where you can move the traffic without them feel like they're being moved. So if you have to spend a little bit on uh, whatever take it takes to motivate that you know, particular thing, that's what you want to do. But you know, if Nike has it right, just do it. Just get into business and you won't believe the amount of money that you're going to make. And the location doesn't have to be, 20 years ago, if I was talking to you, the location would have had to have been the best, richest town in the United States of America on Main Street, on the corner. Nowadays, we all do it. Uh, Paula and I are doing it. You know, hey, well, let's go out to dinner tonight. Well, you know, do we pick the Ritz-Carlton? No. We say, oh, look, our friend told us about this little bistro that only has 20 seats and it's uh, down a, an alleyway. We'll go out of our way to get you know, good food uh, from a little place like that. The people will find you. They, they will find your store. Uh, you don't need to have, it, it's always good, but you don't have to have the walk by traffic. You have a, a location that is easily accessible, it's safe, and they'll come. And signage. Like you said, on the floors, nobody's going to come back to your store because they remembered how pretty your floors were. That's right. They're going to come back for your ice cream. Who else has questions? <laughs> um, we, well, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, question. Um, the ingredients you put in, like the three-quart or six-quart, it doesn't equal the six-quart. How do you uh, figure out the expansion so it's not like overrun? Overrun. Yeah, so you can't put in, the, that's your finished product. The six quarts is your finished. So, so, so if you put in like four quarts of mix, you're going to get out a little more than, we say six quarts, but you get more than that. If you were to run, that's at homemade, that's 100% overrun. If you were to make super premium or gelato, you're not going to get that full finished product out because you're putting less air. It's the air content. And it also depends on the inclusions, what, yeah. what else you're putting in the machine. If you want to make vanilla ice cream and all you're adding is the mix, then yes, homemade will get you 100% over on and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. But if you're adding cheesecakes and chocolates and preserves and, and uh, peaches and all that, you have to take that into consideration. Except for like water ice or Italian ice, that has like no expansion, it's just sugar water. So whatever you put in, you're pretty much practically getting back out. Okay. Like the orange and cranberry, you're putting in just the orange juice, cranberry juice, and sugar. So we put in four quarts, you're going to get about four and a half out. It only has about 17% expansion. Okay. And then uh, the ice cream, what's the expansion on that? It depends on what you're making. So how I describe it to when I'm talking to people on the phone, I'm a visual person. So you know when you take egg whites and you take a whisk and you whisk it really, really, really fast, you're getting a meringue. It's fluffy. 
that's the same concept. You're making homemade ice cream, it's going really fast, pumping a lot of air into it, so it's making your ice cream expand. If you were to make butter, which is just cream and salt, and you sit there for a long time and you're churning it, you're getting a thick product, butter, right? The same process. So the slower the machine goes, the less air it's putting into making a thicker ice cream. Oh. If that helps. I'm a visual person. Just to, <laughs> just to uh, maybe clarify it a little bit, if you're making junky vanilla ice cream, just your basic mix in the machine, and you put uh, five quarts in there, and it's 100% over, and how much would you get out? Anybody? Wow. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> I think tell me, tell me. Double. Double. Ten quarts. Very good. Double. It's 100% overrun. Mm -hmm. So if you're just putting in the mix with no inclusions, nothing else, then you'll double it. So you put in five quarts in this machine right here, you get out ten quarts. I use a 24-quart machine. If I put in 10 quarts, which is my normal run, and without inclusions, I'll get back 20 quarts, which is how many gallons? Five gallons. Now, normally on a 24 with my inclusions, whatever, and inclusions mean anything, chocolate chips, uh, caramel, uh, cheesecake, whatever, uh, I get, I count on six, ga six gallons uh, coming out of my 24. Sometimes I get a little lucky, I get seven. Uh, I mean, luck has nothing to do with it, but I count on making a batch of ice cream and getting six gallons. So if I make a double batch, I know I've got 12 gallons, goes in my chest freezer, I'm good for the week on that flavor. And I'll make uh, between 60 and 80 gallons at a run. Like if I go in to make ice cream at nine o'clock in the morning, I'll know that I'm going to make 60 to 80 gallons. I've done as much as 110 gallons in one sitting or one session, one session. But uh, now the smaller machine, yeah, you're going to work harder. Not harder, sorry, I keep doing that. You're going to work longer. This isn't hard work. Uh, just remember that it's not prudent to make ice cream while your store is open. Very bad idea uh, because you're going to lose focus. Did I add the sugar or not? I forget. Um, oh, I forgot to put the chocolate in there, and, and then you dump it. Then you got your gallons, you dump it out because no good. So focus is key. That's why uh, I go in off hours. Now, when you have your own store, you can finish watching uh, Johnny Carson. Oh, look at me dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can, what's the new guy? What's his name? I don't know. They've all been uh, thrown Kimmel. off. Huh, who? Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. You can watch Jimmy Fallon and then 12.30, go make ice cream at your store. It's your store. Do whatever you want. Close the door, put your music on, dance, do whatever you want. The phone's not going to ring. People aren't coming in. It's your store. And I've done that. I've One o'clock, I said, I'm not tired. Might as well do it now and save me tomorrow. So just know that you can't do it when your store is open. One thing people get hung up on a lot <clears throat> is uh, the overrun and the fat content. Um, one thing about overrun, you can, you can translate it, or to a better way to understand it is uh, we all understand proof and alcohol. If you've got an 80 proof rum, it's 40% alcohol. That's what proof means. It's 40% alcohol and 40% other inert stuff. So if we take ice cream and say it's 80 proof, uh, it's 40% dairy, and 40% air. So that makes it a little easier to figure that out. That's at homemade though. Uh, that would be, yes. Homemade, homemade set. If you go to the store and you buy a pint of haagen and then you buy a pint of Briars, you'll know the difference. And a pint of Talenti is a gelato. If you've ever had the Talenti, that's gelato. But they, but they all have their place. Um, the, the Briars, well, the Briars is a hard example because it's, it's, it's a crummy ice cream. But Used to be good. Just because Jeff's running 100% overrun. And uh, you would think, oh, well, that's maximum amount of air allowed by law. It must not be a good ice cream. And Jeff's only running 10% fat, which is the federal minimum to call it ice cream. This ice cream's got two strikes against it. But it doesn't because, think about it. 
you eat the entire package, you eat the taste of it, the flavor. Everything is about the flavor. I have yet to see anybody, and I've repeated this before, so don't shoot me. <laughs> uh, nobody ever walks out of an ice cream parlor and says, that is the best damn fat content I've ever eaten. <laughs> or I can't wait to come back tomorrow because the air content was so good. It was the appropriate amount of air and fat for what Jeff was trying to achieve in a good eating ice cream. The turtle I, cheesecake was good and thick and creamy and rich, right? Mm -hmm. And that's 10% fat, 100% over them. Yeah, and uh, I put, uh, I worked with putting Haagen-Dazs into business uh, back in uh, 1971. And Reuben Mattis and his mother were just down the street in the Bronx and they were trying to make the perfect ice cream to sell in pints. They didn't have a store, they were selling pints. And so they wanted a heavier ice cream so, because they knew with a heavy ice cream, you'd take a spoonful when you first brought it home, you'd have a small portion after dinner, and if you're like me, another spoonful at 11 o'clock at night before you go to bed. You pick at haagen -Dazs. If you sat down and ate the whole pint, which you can do, you're gonna feel pretty darn full. You're sure not gonna eat dinner. So they were targeting a specific market for that. Jeff's Ice Cream Parlor wants to give you a nice big portion and leave you feeling so refreshed from it that you say, uh, you know, I'm going back in and get another one. That's, that to me is the perfect ice cream. So don't get hung up on fat content. And fat content, we, we base it on what's the norm in your area. In New York City, it's got to be 16% butter fat, which I think is too high. Um, if, yeah, the more if, north you go, the higher the, the, higher it goes. the butter fat because the weather gets colder. Mm -hmm. um, so don't take just everything you hear as norms. What you have to figure out is, you know, what is the best product for what you're trying to sell? Jeff is selling 100% correct. He's selling flavor. He's not selling fat, he's not selling air, he's selling flavor. When you eat his ice cream, if, you, if Jeff gives you a pale pink ice cream and you taste it, you don't say, oh wow, that's really good. Is that raspberry or strawberry? You know it's raspberry, or you know it's strawberry because he put enough in. That's, that's what the key to ice cream is. Uh, and my machines are the only ones in the world where you can adjust the air content. And I'm telling you, uh, that's fine and well uh, because it'll let you tailor, oh, there's that word. They don't make batch freezers. Um, you can specify what you want using my machine, but for the most part, you're gonna make a good eating ice cream. That's, that's the goal here. Yes? So this is an air cooled. What does the water cooled look like? Looks just like that. That one. Yeah. Oh, that one's water cooled. This is this is the countertops are air cooled. The big ones come water or air. That's the way we cool the engine or the compressor. We either blow air across it, and it's going to take this room up 10 degrees uh, in a short amount of time, or we run water through it only while the star refrigeration switch is on. Once that switch goes off, the water goes off. Yeah. So. Just think of like your washing machine. You have your washing machine hooked up all the time, but it doesn't use water until you wash a load of clothes. The same concept with these. When the larger the machines they get, the water cooled is much more efficient for yourself as well because it gets producing quite a bit of heat into the building. And a lot of people sometimes just automatically think air cooled. Well, I like to always push for water cooled for the fact that everyone says, oh, I don't have the water lines, I don't have the plumbing. You don't need plumbing. It's one water line in and one water line out. That is it. We provide the hoses for you, but if you needed them longer, you could go pick them up at the hardware store and make them longer. Um, countertops, they don't produce as much heat, so it's fine to stick with air cooled. For the 24 quart, how, much, how many gallons of water would it run through, say, an eight hour? Run. Well, that just depends, and it's that's it. it has a regulating valve on it, so it maintains it. It changes to maintain the just discharge water temp, so it can at open wide two gallons per minute. But that's just depending on how much you're doing. If you ran it for eight hours straight, yeah, and it's not an ac it's not a fair question no. <laughs> because Christy just said. I mean, the analogy of the washing machine is great. I hadn't heard that. Uh, Christy just explained it. It's not running for eight hours. Mm -hmm. I get this from health inspectors. I want to tear my hair out. How many times do I have to tell the health inspector? It's running for eight minutes. Now, in eight minutes, it's actually going to run, in, on average, four gallons of water. So you can't say per hour because you happen to be a very slow, lazy ice cream maker. It, you make one batch in eight minutes, and then it takes you 15 minutes before you get to batch number two. I didn't use, 50, I didn't use uh, 30 gallons of water in that 15 minutes because the switch wasn't on. So there is no gallons per hour. 
It's how many batches you're going to do. Mm -hmm. People complain uh, about, oh, my water bill is so high. Everybody's bill is so high, but it really isn't. Your water bill comes in separately once a month. Whoa, $97 for water. If that was an air-cooled machine, it would be air conditioning cost. It would be electrical cost. And it would be the middle of July, and you'd say, whoa, look at my electric bill. It's $1,200. Ah, but what do I expect? I'm an ice cream parlor. I'm running a lot of equipment. It's buried in there, so people don't see it. But the water bill sticks out at you, and you're always you're always going to be better off with water cooled because you're going to need. Imagine taking this room in Florida and, and up it to 80 degrees. You're going to pay for that. Uh, also, the water cooled machine costs a thousand less to buy than the air because it has fewer moving parts, so we cut you a break. Everybody else goes air, water. We don't care. Here's the price. We actually give you a discount on the water cooled. You were moving yeah. parts. But unless you're in Saudi Arabia or on a septic tank, which you don't want to fill up with clean water, San Francisco. you don't need, you don't need um, uh, air cooled. I wouldn't do it. Uh, air cooled can always be converted over by using an air conditioning unit outside. It's called a glycol recovery system, and it pumps cold uh, antifreeze into the machine and back out again. $10,000 to run four machines. You can do that. But that's air cooled is air cooled for life. For the next 40 years, that thing is grinding out hot air. And you're going to say, why didn't I listen to Steve and Christy? Are you awake, Jeff? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just looking at that flap up there. Mm -hmm. Are so, you ready for lunch? Do you need food? I'm ready. I okay. have to go get all that ready, so keep yakking. I'll come okay. help. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, again, I didn't, uh, uh, if I understood you right, you said that all the countertop ones are all air. So yes, they are. So the can't be water? They don't come water. Okay, that's it. So the compressors aren't so noise. big. The compressors aren't so big that they need to be water cooled. So just 24, 44, that's it. 12, 24, and 44, yeah. All water cooled. Will you ever make a machine bigger than the 44 quart? Uh, we did. Back in the 1930s, we made 80. Um, you needed a, a block and tackle. You know what that is? That's, that's a hand crane uh, where you attach it and you pull a pulley, a series of pulleys, and then you slide the dasher in. That's the only way you could get the dasher in because it weighed so much. Uh, there was a brand of ice cream back then called Seal Test, and they had 50 of those in a row. And they had overhead tracks for the crane to lift the. There's pictures of it in the hall, of, of my uncle uh, lying inside the freezing cylinder of one of those babies. Now I have a friend in South Florida. Paula, who where's has, the ice? Uh, he runs a cream ice business, a very small store. Maybe it's 700 square feet, and he has two Emery 44s in the back that he runs almost constantly. That means he's probably making about uh, one or two thousand dollars a day easily. Oh, easily. 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 Yeah. Easily. Uh, and it's only cream ice. Interesting. Anybody else? Well, we'll break for lunch. So, what do we do for like for cleaning the, on the product you, you, you use? For sterilizing the machine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, what, what do you do for the sterilizing sanitation, sanitation of the machine? At the beginning of the day, um, I pour in, I buy a commercial sanitizer. This is my wife, Paula, if you haven't met her, and our office manager. Um, I buy a commercial sterilizer and uh, put in water according to the directions, pour it in the machine, run it for about a minute or whatever your health department says. I know that the second that water the very second that water hits the metal parts, everything's sanitized. So run right for a minute, make everybody happy. Drain it out, and you're ready to go. That's it. As long as you don't open up that door and put your hands inside, you don't have to re-sanitize. You don't have to re-sanitize between batches because you didn't break the sterility of the machine by just taking out the vanilla and then going to strawberry. So really simple because everything is so big. Soft ice cream machines, if you've ever heard people talk about, oh, I hate a, an ice cream machine, it takes an hour to clean. That's a soft serve machine. They have so many moving parts, they're so complex. That's why almost all the McDonald's machines are down at 10 at night, is because nobody can keep them running. It's, it's, it's an embarrassment to them. So that, that part's real easy. All right, let's eat.